All right, fellas, welcome to Press Pass Live. That's right, your weekly OMFL show for everything OMFL here in the Grown Folks Online community. Thank you for tuning into the show today. I get to have another special guest. Pude is kind of down and out right now with his uh, voice as he kind of gets ready for his next little transplant. So I get to bring in another one of our board members, one of the new guys that joined us. I think this Madden, if I'm not mistakenly just has been a great great member and we're excited to have him our champion in the omfl the atlanta falcons owner d wayne welcome to the show i'm glad to be here nate well, there we go we, we've got some southern boys here on the show today so you're gonna have to work your way through the heavy accents though so i gotta say d wayne that arkansas accent is pretty heavy right now pretty strong pretty it's, strong man the accent game is strong, that is for sure. Well, let's hop right into it. Um, I got to be honest, I don't remember exactly where we left off last time. I want to say that we left off in week number six. So I'm going to cover seven and eight. We are in week number nine, but we're going to be advancing tonight. Wasn't able to get with Wayne this weekend. My schedule was just really, really crazy. So let me catch you up at week seven and eight. Then we're going to hop in, do some little back and forth with Wayne, and we'll cover some stuff that's going on here. The 49ers fall to the Rams 10 to 22. The Buccaneers in week number seven won against the Cowboys. A big victory for the Buccaneers here. 31 to 21, the Cowboys' only loss in the season. They've been so dominant again this season. The Vikings beat the Jets 30 to 20. The Patriots squeak out a victory. This was actually a really great game, but they beat the Packers 27 to 24. The Cardinals, my Cardinals, beat up on the Raiders 29 to 24. Another really great game that you should go back and watch. The Chargers squeak out against the Steelers 20 to 19. Not sure what's happening to Jordan and his Steelers, but I hope he's able to get things figured out and turned around. The Panthers fall to the Bengals 31 to 20. The Bills get a road victory against the Colts 14 to 3. The new guy B Hog, who's actually in the game of the week this week, they're actually playing that game right now. Bills versus Vikings. So go tune into that after we're done here. But he has been playing very impressive football lately. And a big victory over Colin. The Jaguars fall to the Broncos at home 29 to 24. The Falcons flexing those muscles against the Saints 46 to 21. The Lions all over the Redskins 40 to 17. The Seahawks with an impressive victory over the Bears 44 to 20. The Texans beat the Browns 19 to 14. Those Browns kind of come back to the pack. We're going to talk about them in just a little bit. And then finally the Titans beat the the Giants, there we go, 36 to 33, and that is a look at week seven. Let's take a quick look at week eight, and then we're going to talk about some stuff that's going on here. The Colts fall to the Titans 29 to 35. A really nice victory for the Titans there. Colin is coming, come back to the pack a little bit. He's going to have to get some things figured out and turned around as he makes his playoff push. The Chargers with a 24 to 13 victory over the Raiders. The Raiders are just such a talented team, but they can't quite get things figured out this season. The Bills with the 26 to 23 victory over Massimo and the Texans. The Broncos with the 24 to 15 victory over the Bengals. Now Cardinals with a one point win in an epic, epic game. You need to go back and watch that one over the 49ers. 16 to 15. The Chiefs with a 35 to 19 victory over the Ravens. The Dolphins, 34, the Jets, 14. Those Falcons, man, coming back strong, 23 to seven over the Browns. The Lions have been playing really well lately, 34 to 13 over the Seahawks. The Lions have really found them a quarterback and they are back in that playoff hunt after a down year last year. Those Packers are sticking with it, 28 to 24 victory over the Vikings. That's a really big win for those Packers in that division. The Panthers with a 29-26 victory over the Buccaneers. The Patriots with a 45-38 victory over the Jaguars. That's not like the Jaguars. They normally don't give up that many points. So they're going to have to get some things figured out with that defense. And then finally, wrapping up week number eight, the Redskins with a 45-30 victory over the Eagles. And that catches us up to week nine, where we're at. We're not going to cover week nine just because we're not all the way complete. So we'll cover week nine on the next show. So, D. Wayne, let's hop right on into it. Let's take a look at the AFC North. We were talking about those Browns who 
really jumped out to a, a, a nice lead there. They're playing much better football this season. But now they've come back to the pack. The Bengals, who struggled earlier, have, have won their way, found their winning ways. Even the Ravens, who just got a brand new owner last night. So I'm excited that they're, they've got an owner. Jordan and the Pittsburgh Steelers have been struggling. What is going on in the AFC North? Hey, the, the AFC North is just, it's tough to say because you got such a uh, assortment of teams right there with the Browns, with the uh, the Bengals, the Ravens, the Steelers. And the Steelers actually surprised me the most because I expect them to be a lot better than their record shows. Um, and I played him earlier this season, and he played me tooth and nail at the end. And so his record really, really surprises me. Um, but that division in general is just up in the air. It's uh, you got the Browns at four and four, the Bengals at four and four, and the the Ravens who got a win over the Browns last night, three and five, and it's just it's just up in the air, honestly. Um, and I'm a little biased because they have had to play the NFC uh, South this year, and I'm a little biased in the South myself. But uh, they played right there with us, so it's it's gonna be interesting to see how that division turns out. Yeah, I can't figure out the AFC North myself. I got to admit, the two things that are making me scratch my head is, it outlaw. You almost had me at a, to be a believer. I was, I was just about to buy me a Browns jersey, but man, you've you've lost some big games here lately. I'm kind of nervous about that. You had to prove it to me. I wasn't quite on that bandwagon, but man, you jumped out to a big league. I was starting to believe, and then. The Pittsburgh Steelers, now we don't get to hear from Jordan a lot. He's just one of those owners we just don't hear from a lot. Probably really busy in life. But I really expected that team to play much better than his 1-6 and six rating. I'm excited about the, the uh, Baltimore Ravens getting a new owner. He played exceptionally great in his uh, practice game last night that they Ooh. have to submit to us to be able to look. So it was really, really good stuff that he submitted. And I think he's going to be one of those really good players. He's got a roster that Vandalay, the old owner, had done a lot of work to. I think the key here is going to be Hude in those Bengals. Now, that can be all thrown out if Hude has to miss a couple of games due to his health reasons. But if Hude doesn't have to miss any games, he really has an opportunity. Now that the Browns have made this a little bit easier by coming back to the pack, this could be his year to win this AFC North and get in there. Pittsburgh is down, and that helps everyone in this division. The uh, one that's just out there, who knows what's going to happen is the Baltimore Ravens. We're just not quite sure what that team's going to look like or be like. And then the Browns, they, that defense has really been rebuilt. They could play much, much better as we continue to uh, progress here in the season. It's just going to be interesting to see exactly what happens there. But this is going to be about Hude and those Browns. And everybody's going to be keeping an eye on the new kid because he could really turn things around here. Let's talk about the AFC and NFC. One of the things that I found really interesting, especially the first two seasons, season one in particular, so season, um, what are we in, season 70, season 68 of the OMFL, the AFC was very heavy. I mean, you had teams like the Patriots that were up there. I think he had one loss. The Bills had uh, two losses on the season that year. Those guys were battling it out. Um, the, it was very, very AFC heavy, whereas in the NFC that first season, you had a lot of 8-8 eight and eight teams. I think we had a 7-9 and nine team that was pushing to win their division. But last year, you've seen that shift kind of begin to even out. Of course, you won the whole thing with the Atlanta Falcons, so that really shifted the power. But my Cardinals begin to play better. The Packers made a late run last season. The Vikings have already been up there. The Cowboys turned around from season one. It was really, really one of the strongest teams. And then here this year, you got the Rams who've stepped up their game. The Falcons are back there. The Lions are playing much better. Um, you've got the Buccaneers who are a really, really good roster. And then you look over the AFC, and you've got some 4-4 four and four teams, some 5-3 and three teams that are there in the playoffs already. Is the NFC that much better than the AFC this season? Ooh, that much better. Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, you guys, you got one division in the AFC that just that scares me, and that's AFC West. You got three teams right there, especially the top two teams, Kansas City and Denver. I think can be any team in this league on any night. And Ziploc, I don't know how under two seasons he's played such a low profile, 
but he seems like every time I see his name pop up, he's winning. And um, But the NFC, like I said, you got the Rams, right? No. And the Rams showed so much promise the first year. And last year they had a down year. Um, but the Vikings are in it. The Lions are in it. The Packers, you got a pretty much a one game separating three teams in that division. Um, that's always a tight division. The Cowboys, of course, are leading the East like they always do. Um, but that, it's, it's close. I don't think it, it sways as much either way as it did the first two seasons. The first season was AFC all the way, and that's hard for me to say. Um, but like I said, with, with the Bills having a new owner, um, I, I don't know if he'll be able to hold off the Patriots or the Dolphins, for that matter, for the AFC East. It's going to be a tough one. I think it's a lot more evened out right now than it was the first two seasons, in my opinion. Yeah, I do think it's pretty close. I would have to give the edge to the NFC personally. I just think with the Rams being 8-0, I mean, they've been so very dominant. you got the Cowboys still up there. Um, the Giants, who are an open team right, uh, right now, are going to get uh, – They're not. A, yeah, they are an open team. It's the Eagles. We had that confusion last night. So the Giants are a very loaded roster. Who are going to get a new owner? The Lions are right back in there. They're playing much, much better. The Packers, like you said. So that – NFC is pretty loaded. I do have to say, though, AFC has tightened it up because of teams like the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chargers just got a new owner last night. Again, another guy who had really superb gameplay footage. So it's going to be really interesting to see what he can do with that roster. Then you got the Texans who are playing much better. The ten- Here's the teams that I worry about. Miami Dolphins, Tennessee Titans, Indianapolis Colts, Jacksonville Jaguars. Cleveland Browns, Cincinnati Bengals, those six teams, I just, I can't put any money. I can't put any substance into those teams because they're too up and down. And every time I see them up and I want to buy into them, I can't. They lose. They they let me down. They don't come through. Those teams are still a wait and see. Miami comes out last night, hammers the Patriots. The Patriots make an outstanding comeback to make that a very close game, but still a massive win for the Dolphins. But then they could drop two out of the next four. Cincinnati has tightened that thing up with Cleveland, but they could drop two out of the next four. Houston, who jumped out to this very, I think he was 4-0 and at one time. He's now at 5-3. and three. Jacksonville gave up 44 points last week in week eight. Tennessee can't seem to keep things going. Kansas City, Denver, uh, and the Patriots, about the only teams that you can pretty much count on. And even the Patriots, you're not quite sure what they're going to do there. Buffalo's still a wait and see because they're brand new. I do like the NFC. So since we're talking about playoffs, we're talking about, you know, we're starting to look at that. We're not quite there yet. I mean, we're only halfway through the season. But here in the next four weeks or so, we're going to start to really look and see who is fighting for the playoff spots and who are already starting to think about the offseason. You'll notice, and we've seen this happen at several times, and this is a big NFL debate, but I just want to get your thoughts. There's always going to be some very good teams. If you look at the two wildcard spots, both in the NFC with my Cardinals and the Packers, Cardinals at 6-2, and two, Packers at 5-4, and four. AFC, you got the Chiefs at 7-1, and one, and the Patriots at 5-3. and three. My question to you is, is there going to be a very, very good team who gets left on the outside looking in of the playoffs who probably deserves the playoffs more than a division winner here in the OMFL for Season 70? Uh, like, like, well, you, you hit it right there. You hit it right there. Um, the Rams and, and Cardinals in that division, I, even though it's 8 no, 6 and 2, that's going to go either way. I think y'all still have to play one more time. Um, that's a tough call, but I do think we're going to have an 8 or 9 win team that's going to miss the playoffs in the NFC. And uh, that's just the way it's shaping up right now. Like I said, somebody on the NFC North is going to have 9 wins and not make the playoffs. Um, that's in, in, on, the, on the NFC side. The AFC side, you got. Right now, you got a three-way tie in AFC, or not a three-way tie, but a three-way race in AFC West for who's going to win that division. It's up in the air. Um, I think you could have an eight or nine win team out of the AFC not make it. Because um, you got one team that's probably going to be left out of the loop in AFC West. Um, and, the, and, and the AFC South is still up for grabs, just like the North. Um, 
it's going to be tough. You're going to see a team that's above 500, if not one or two teams above 500, that's not going to make the playoffs on both sides. And I guess that just shows that uh, a testament of how good, the, how, many, how many good owners we have right now. Um, but uh, yeah, I, that's that's I see it. We're gonna have an eight or nine win team in the NFC. I can already, we'll have a nine win team not make the playoffs. And I have a feeling it's gonna be out of the NFC North. I yeah, I, the air, but I have to agree with you. I, I think you're definitely gonna see a nine win team not make it. Now I do think. Um, I think what's interesting for me, especially in the AFC, is going to be the Dolphins and Chargers and Jaguars. I think that either three of those teams, especially after seeing the Chargers gameplay footage with the Patriots and the Chiefs, like one of those teams, you may even see a 10-win team. Maybe it's a long shot, but maybe even an 11-win team not make it. I think it takes 10 wins to make the playoffs in either one of these divisions. And with so much football left to be played, that's going to be hard to get there. Look for the Lions to really push the Packers. Packers are going to have to put the pedal to the metal if they're going to make it because the Lions are roaring back. And I know Junior, he was in the bowl game of season one. He had a down season in season two. He's got his quarterback now. He, If he keeps this hot streak up, he could really make a run. And then the Buccaneers are low in the air, a brand new owner that just took that team over. He could really get things turned around because that defense is so loaded over there. Let's talk about one of those teams, matter of fact, that we were just talking about in the Packers. They have a quarterback by the name of DeMarcus Good, a running back, I should say. I say quarterback, but I meant running back. DeMarcus Good was a second-round pick, pick number 18 by the Packers, and he just was totally in love with his speed. He needed a run back. He was trying to move somebody, and this kid has just stepped on the scene and absolutely shiny. He's a 75 overall. He's got 96 speed, 90 acceleration, 82 ball carrying. He's got 83 juke, 86 agility, 70 awareness. Not really a big catcher, but 72 strength, 81 elusiveness, so pretty good. He comes out of UL Lafayette. We're just looking at the stats. I know it's early. We've only about halfway through the season, but DeMarcus Good looks to be running away with the Rookie of the Year campaign. Is this guy your shoe-in? for Rookie of the Year? Well, uh, compared to the other rookies, uh, he's, he's head above. Uh, except for, and he's a rival of mine, Tyler Mesco of the Saints. The quarterback he's got, chaotic. He, he's, he's captured a lot of signs of life in him this year. And I've, like I said, I've played against him, and that, that kid can just air it out. But the way Priest runs the ball was good. He uh, he runs it so much, and um, I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm not 100 percent on my numbers, but Good is averaging around 25 carries a game, and um, and I'm, I'm comparing him right now to the the rest of the league, just every running back, and he's ahead by the nearest running back on nine carries, and before that, it's about 20 carries more than anybody else, and he's averaging five yards a carry, and with the way Priest runs the ball, and Priest wants to run the ball. Uh, I don't. I honestly do not see unless the Saints can throw up some crazy numbers. I don't see anybody taking the rookie of the year away from Good. Um, but that, like, so that's my opinion. But he runs the ball so much with him, and he's so consistent. He'll go. He'll rush the ball 15 times for 10 yards or 20 yards with him, and then he'll have two runs back to back 60 yards because nobody can match that speed of him. And uh, like I said, Priest is relentless, and Priest is going to run the ball no matter if it's successful or not. And that's why I, I do think that he'll get the rookie of the year. Yeah, I got to agree with you. I think he's my rookie of the year. But I'm going to throw a name out there that you got to watch for, and that's Nick Sowell. Nick was uh, a, a defensive end, I think. I, I want to say he's a defensive end for the New England Patriots. Um, he was drafted in the second round, another second round guy. So this will show you, you can pick up some really good players in the second and third round. He was uh, a second round pick, 30th overall, almost third round. This guy can play 87 strength. He's at 75 block shed, 85 speed, 76 acceleration. He already has eight sacks on the year. So this guy is able to get to the quarterback even this early in his career. And it just goes to show you that even though DeMarcus Good is running away with this, Tyler Mesco's out there. The Saints have to do some more winning for that to happen, though. But if the Patriots are able to get into the playoffs and this guy finishes with 15, 16, 17 sacks, he may be able to steal this from good uh, just because it's so hard to get after the quarterback. So it's going to be a nice race, a fun race, but not 
uh, not an easy race because there are a lot of good players that are rookies that are getting some solid playing time in the season so far. Let's keep this theme going. We're talking about defensive ends for the Patriots. Let's talk about sacks as we're sitting here. Let's look at the two top sack leaders. Right now you've got Aaron Donald, who's absolutely dominant. And this guy just takes over games. He has single-handedly beat me twice. I mean, the guy is just unbelievable. I mean, you have to game plan for him every time you play the Arizona Rams. What he is able to do with Aaron Donald is mind-blowing. It just He is absolutely a stud. And J.J. Watt, who's got 10. And then again, you've got that rookie that we were talking about who's tied for third in, or fourth in the league with eight sacks. So even the rookie's right there in the leading. But my question to you is, is Aaron Donald and J.J. Watt are having some really impactful seasons. We're about halfway through. you got 10 and 12 sacks, respectively. Do you think that these guys can break the sack record, which I think right now, I need to go check my numbers, but I think sits at about 22 Do you think one of these guys breaks the sack record this year, especially for a defensive tackle like Aaron Donald, would be a pretty massive thing to do? No, it's very possible. And like you said, Aaron Donald, I played the Rams my first two years. And uh, if you do not game plan around stopping him, he'll be in your backfield every play he's in your backfield. And um, and watch the same way. I played Massimo my first year, if I'm not mistaken. And – and, of course, everybody knows Watt is a force to be reckoned with. And, like, the last year, Watt had 21 sacks. Um, I kept up with it because, you know, Clowney tried to keep pace and it could not keep pace with Watt or Donald last year, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I think either one of them can make a run at it. And just the way that, that Donald's get, Donald gets used in that game, uh, I'll have to give him the slight edge over Watt. Like I said, he's, he's, he's already he's two sacks behind what he had all of last year. And um, he's just such a force, such a force. And especially if he get, if he gets ahead of you, the Rams do, and makes you get in passing situations, Donald just just pins his ears back and comes at the quarterback. And so I I, I actually think both of them can make a run at it, but I think Donald would edge Watt on on breaking that record. Man, I really hate that we're agreeing so much, but I definitely have to agree with you. I think Watt's going to get close again. He has the potential to get close again. I just think that sometimes, especially for defensive ends, I find in this game, they come in bunches. So he'll get two, three, four in a game, and then you won't hear from him for a game or two. The thing about Donald is the way that the Rams use him is someplace he's inside, someplace he will bounce out outside, and he's just able to be so disruptive. And really, like you said, if he gets you in a passing situation, it's game over. You better get that ball out within a second or two. Or you better keep a running back here. You better do something because Aaron Donald is coming. Uh, I know for sure in my game he had two or three sacks, and he missed another two where he just dove at me a little too soon. And it is unbelievable. This guy just absolutely – he is on a tear. He's ripping it up. I do believe that Aaron Donald will break it. I think Aaron Donald will finish between 25 and 27 sacks this year. Look for J.J. Watt to maybe break it, maybe get that 20 to 22 range. I just don't think he's got enough in him to get what Aaron Donald, Aaron may set this record so high that it just isn't ever broken again, because this guy is just playing unbelievable football right now. So there you have it. That is a look at weeks six, seven, and eight here in the OMFL. D. Wayne, thank you for joining me. I just want to give you an opportunity. Any closing thoughts? Any closing thoughts about where we sit in the halfway mark of the season? Well, it's it's an interesting year. Uh, That's the the most modest way to say it. It's been an interesting year. Um, but like I said, it, we're, we're halfway through the season. Turn the corner, trade deadline's over. Um, everybody's teams are pretty much set. And it ought to be an interesting playoff this year. you got some people in play, uh, Texans, Browns, that haven't been played last couple of years for playoff. And it ought to be interesting to see if they can get in there, if they can make a move in the playoff. And uh, I guess the last thing I can go on is um, – Panthers and uh, Falcons play tonight, guys. Tune in for uh, a good NFC South rival game. Yeah, I hope that Double Zero, he lets things get in his head, man. He, he gets a couple of bad breaks, and it's it's like game over for him. But at the same time, he can get those hot streaks going. He's going to have a brand-new running back in David Johnson, so I'm intrigued to see how David's going to work. 
through the halfway season, I got to admit, it's been a good season. Now, we've had that little bit of a turnover where we had those five owners that we parted ways with, and we're not quite 100% back. If you're new here, here's this is you're listening to one of the things that we do really well here at Press Pass Live and also our draft shows and all the extra content that guys put out there. It's one of the things that we kind of pride ourselves in. So if you know of a good owner or a buddy who's looking for another league or just looking for a league, I'd love for you to send them our way. They can go to our website, grownfolksoc.com, hit join us and send in their application. I basically emailed them the Discord link. We get them in Discord. I give them the next steps, which includes them looking over the rules, which I just finished making some videos about and taking a short quiz and then giving us some gameplay footage just like you went through when you first joined. Plus, we got a new logo. I love the new logo. It just came out really sharp. Um, I just, I, it, we, it was time for a refresh. We had the old logo for a good five or six years. It just was, it was time for an upgrade. And I really, really am digging the new logo. And so I hope that you guys are liking it also. The website is totally up to date. The forums are totally up to date. Daddy Leagues is going to be finished updating. We'll get Press Pass Live out there to everybody. It just has been a good season. I got to be honest, I just want to get full again. Uh, we are working really hard, very diligently on getting full. Had an issue last night, the computer or something happened really weird with the Eagles. So I got to give Hude a shout out. He's been working hours and hours fixing that. Uh, we're going to get that all fixed up and we just need three more owners. We've got two guys who are on the waiting list now. Um, they still are going through the process, but we need guys. So if you know some guys, send them our way. We'd love to get them plugged in. D-Wayne, thanks for joining me, man. We're going to have to get you and Hude on at the exact same time. This has been fun. I hope everyone else has enjoyed the show. Fellas, for all the leadership here in the OMFL, thank you for tuning in to the show this week. We will see you next weekend. Peace. Have a good one, guys. Make it!